in this video we're not really going to be focusing on painting too much but the art of kit bashing. What is kit bashing you may be wondering? Well it's taking one or more kits or parts of kits and <laughs> mashing them into one thing. It can be as subtle as taking a space marine and adding a few little extra parts on it to make it a little bit different from the standard kit to the downright completely different. Such as these shambling pox walkers who've taken a strong liking to borrowing some space marine parts and armour that they've seen and picked up off the battlefield and decide to use themselves. Kit mashing is one of my favourite things. It takes a model that everyone will have and spin it into making it something more unique to your own person personal army or collection. There's so many possibilities with kit bashing and that's what I'm hoping to give you a taste of in this video along with some do's and don'ts. In this video I want to make a miniature of my Dungeons and Dragons character. He's called Balram the He's a dwarf rogue and if you may I'll read you a bit of Balram's character backstory. <laughs> a once legendary warrior, formerly known as Balram Battlehammer. You would be hard pressed to find a dwarf that doesn't know of Balram. <laughs> After stubbornly breaking the peace between the Battlehammer and Iron Hand clans, Balram was stripped of the Battlehammer clan title and exiled. He now travels from tavern to tavern, sharing his stories in exchange for beer or his next quarry. <laughs> He's not the brightest of fellows. Someone that would rather charge into battle without actually having a plan in mind. He's got a strong taste for beer and brewing of alcohol and the consumption of this probably reflects the decisions or lack of that he makes. Extremely impulsive and he's not the easiest person to talk to. He enjoys nothing more than attempting to steal stuff for reasons, a pain in the arse for a DM and teammates alike. He's a bit of a git, but he means well, I think. So using this information and with the picture that I've drawn in my mind, I'm gonna try and translate that into miniature form. The first thing you're going to want to do when kit bashing is to assess the components that you've got to kit bash. In this instance, I'm going to be using some Oathmark Dwarf Infantry and Dwarf Heavy Infantry sprues. I picked these individual ones up from a company local to me for £5 each. So I picked up two of these kits just because they were relatively inexpensive for the model that I was wanting to personally create. First up, we're going to have a look at the Dwarf Heavy Infantry sprue and have a look at some of the contents that it comes with. So already I can see quite a few bits that I'm probably going to use from this one. First and foremost, the body, just because it seems to be quite a light sort of armour that fits my character specification. The axe, of which I kind of pictured Balram to have. And well, Balram's never seen too far away from a drink, so the tankard's definitely going to come in use. But there are some other really cool bits and pieces that just give me so much inspiration for other projects that I might use for basing and other details that I might want to add. So checking this over to see what you actually get on each of these sprues that I'm going to be using and it might look a bit wasteful but you can always use these parts for other projects. Moving on to the Dwarf Infantry, these guys look a little bit more light in armour with more chainmail components on the body which I wasn't really feeling. But those spears look like they could be used for something. And not only that, I did see a head that did really take my fancy. Although it was just missing something. Something that I always pictured Balram to have. Although looking further into this sprue, there was a sort of ball looking thing with a really interesting mane. Of which I thought I could maybe cut off and stick onto his head. Yes, I could maybe use that for a Mohican. These guys come on these square bases. I've never actually done a model on a square base. I'm not going to be using these, unfortunately, although I will do maybe in the future. Instead, I'm opting for a small round base. So moving this aside, let's have a look at some of the other components that I can use. These are all sprues that I have accumulated over my short time of miniature painting. Most of these are from Space Marine and sci-fi sort of kits. I do have a bits box full of different components. Again, mostly of sci-fi stuff. I don't know, I'm not really much of a fantasy guy. Looking through this, there's probably some bits that I might be able to use. In particular, I'm really feeling like using this cape that I got with my Lando Calrissian miniature that I painted in episode 2. But we'll see about that and if I can incorporate it onto the miniature. With this being said, I really do highly recommend keeping your spare bits in a bits box because you never know what you might be able to use. So, with that being said, let's move on. 
so assembling once again isn't too dissimilar from episode 2 except this time we're not following any instructions I've got a couple more tools this time around we're probably going to be using an emery board just to sand some pieces down to give more of a flat smoother finish I've got poly cement just because I find it to be a thicker glue than the Tamiya extra thin but without further ado let's get on to building because that's all this really is is just cutting parts off and test fitting to see how it'll look and so let's start off with the body so i'm going to snip into this and get that part off oh well these have stands actually and i'm not too fond of that if i was to put it on a base it would require me to you know fill over it with some basing material so what i'm going to do is i'm going to cut into this and get that off of which is a somewhat delicate procedure but given these miniatures didn't really cost me too much I'm happy to just have a go we've got some other bodies if it doesn't go right that we can use so let's just cut into this maybe not in the methods that I'm showing you here anyone watching this take any method of me doing anything with a grain of salt I know it's not particularly health and safety in mind but it got the job done in this instance. So I'm going to go for the head now and cut that off. Shave some of that flash down. And while I'm just going to plonk this onto the body and see how that looks. There is always some time to reposition these things as they are gluing. So let's move on. Looking in my box of bits, I'm going to use that Lando cape. But the only problem is it's already got a collar piece on and that's not going to sit particularly nicely. So, you know, I'm going to have to snip and shave this off and maybe fabricate it. Anyway, moving on to something a little more fiddly. We're going to cut that mane off of this ball and try and give Balram his mohawk. Now this one's a little bit of a hairy one. Just because we've only got one version of this component on the sprue. So let's hope I don't fluff this up. And it's going to require me to be very, very delicate with my knife. Taking my time to try and cut it off. Which um, I'm quite surprised, admittedly, that I've managed to do here. So let's glue that on. I said glue that on. Again, glue it on. There we go, we get there in the end. And just to try and cement that down a little bit further to make it look a little bit more natural, I found at least. Tamiya Extra Thin is pretty great at that. Trying to get the beer stein to fit in the hand required me to cut into the handle and so gluing that onto the hand itself was a bit of a challenge. But with some persistence and again some Tamiya extra thin that managed to glue together and looked relatively natural. 
this pretty much saw the miniature itself done. The one thing I will say about kit bashing is it's so easy to overdo things. Try and keep in mind, does this look right? Does this look natural? Being considerate always renders the best results. Lame! Once I finished the miniature, I felt like the black stand that I'd picked out for him wasn't really working for me. And I really wanted to do something interesting with base work. And so I found in my bits box this Age of Sigmar sprue, of which had some pre-molded bases of which were perfect for the fantasy vibe that I'm going for. I picked one that wouldn't really affect the other miniatures that were on this sprue and so cutting the one that I wanted off and test fitting the miniature with some blue tack I decided to go for this just because it kind of made the miniature look a little more heroic and a little more adventure and action ready. So gluing them onto that there was only a tiny bit of touching up in terms of filling the holes that were for the peg holes for the other miniatures that were meant to sit on it. So filling those up using those pegs made this look a little more natural. Now while I was quite happy with this I remember the spears that came with the dwarf light infantry sprue so cutting some of these off and sticking these to the base added a bit more points of interest. It's things like this that can recreate the story and that's what you really want. Now from the back of the miniature it looked a little bit plain so I decided to add a bit more detailing with a shield. The only problem is if I just stuck it down like this it'd look a bit silly and not natural. I wanted to make it look like it had been sat there for quite a few months if not years. Either way I cut this down slightly to make it look as if it had been bedded into the ground. And then smoothing down with an emery board just to make it sit better. I then test fitted it to the base and ultimately glued it. To try and secure some of this material down, I decided to use sugar. I'm not sure if this was the best choice, but I put some glue down, put some sugar on it, and well, let's hope it stays. We'll see. I know people have used some pretty wacky materials to base their miniatures. <laughs> We've primed miniatures before, but I think in this situation, it really does bring everything together. Things that look like they might not work together, partially due to the different colours in plastic that you've used from different kits. Spraying everything in one set colour really does bring everything together and brings you one step closer to the final visualisation and realisation of your miniature being finished. So priming this from left and right, getting that miniature completely covered until it's ready for painting. So I'm not gonna talk you through the process of painting, I'm just gonna get down into this. So hope you enjoy literally watching paint dry.